So today we can we we carry on the Verilog uh, introduction, which is your appendix A of the book. So you have uh, enough information, also enough time to do your prelab K. I hope you, all of you have started to work on that and install uh, the Icarus compiler. If you found an issue on the installation. Please refill to Moodle on, on the instructions. If not, just email me. I'll help you install it. All right. So last session, we, we reached to the point that we were talking about the optimization. And we mentioned that uh, in logic, the expressions um, might not be just a singular this, uh, expression doing uh, certain stuff, right? So we can have two different logic expressions can have exactly the same behavior, but the costs are not the same, right? So identical behavior, different costs. So, and that's the job of optimization. We want to choose the cheapest and faster one, right? So for instance, instead of having A multiply B plus A B prime, we're going to have A factored in. And then uh, because of the rules we, we saw in the previous lecture, this will be A. Right? So instead of doing all this stuff, it was just A. Just like that, we can factor C, and then we're going to factor in a, a, a prime B with A, and also A prime B with B, and C was factored, so that would be C. So we reached up to this point in the previous lecture. So now, we talk about the rest of the stuff, which are half adder and full adder. Right? So what is a half adder? It receives as input two signals, right, A and B, and it's going to find the sum, which in truth table, we're going to show it with S column. And then there's another one that is called C, or the carry value. It's the one that in normally in, in addition we, we carry over, right? And the logic formula for the carry is A multiplied B, because on the case that the only case we have carry is the case that both of them were 1, right? So 1 plus 1 would become 0 plus a carry. On the other cases, we won't have any. So that would be 0 here, OK? So this would be 0 in sum. This would be 1 in sum. This would be still 1 in sum. On both cases, 0 carry. And then this one would be 0 with 1 carry. So the way we implement this in logic, it would be using these two gates, right? Does anyone know what the name of this gate was? Mm -hmm. What is this? And this is N, right. So, and that's exactly implementing this S for us, okay? S and C. You see, for C, this A signal comes up to here, B also comes here, and so there's an AND, that's why we have the output of C. For this, this is an or as you mentioned. Okay, just like that, we have a full adder that receives three inputs, so one carry as input as well as A and B, right? So that's, that's the truth table, so we have three inputs now, A, B, and C. So the signal S can be implemented using two XORs. It's as if we are having two full adders to do one, uh, I'm sorry, we have two half adders to implement one full adder, right? So each of those internal modules is, is one half adder. So that's why we have, we need to use two XORs and two ANDs here, and then an OR of the AND to, to finalize the, the C out. So we start from this. This is an optimized version. Both of them are the same. So when we have all three zeros, we're going to have zero as S and zero as carry. So the cases, the only case that carries one is here, 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 and here, which was the case that either the carry was one or B was one, or uh, the carry was one or A was one, or carry was zero, both of the A and B was one, were one or all three were one, which we have both cases as one. So it's just simple addition with carry. Okay. So 
So normally in um, in a logic design, we uh, we string eight of them together to create a byte width uh, adder, right? To, and to generate eight by eight cascaded over the uh, cascade the carry bit from one adder to the next one. So this is the way it is working normally. Um, so this is just a review. Many uh, many of you have heard of this these words through chapter two and three, or perhaps you've started working on your lab. So these are just um, a recap. Just like that for don't care, we started ta to talk about it in chapter four. So don't care, as, as, you, as you can infer with a name, we don't care about the output of that. So when, the, when this input is illegal and does not appear first, or the input appears only when the output is disabled, so we don't, uh, we don't care about it. And they're only useful when we are optimizing, right? To understand which way it's going to get to a cheaper one. So that's the don't care state. And Verilog, by now you've already started perhaps working on your pre-lab. So it's a hardware description language, right? We want to use Verilog to design, optimize, and simulate hardware. Uh, it was started in mid 80s. And then some other functionalities and hardware synthesis was added. So there is also a, another competitor called VHDL. Each of them has, uh, has their own pros and cons. But for this course, we, we are mostly focused on Verilog language. And Icarus is a compiler and simulator for Verilog. All right. So what can Verilog do? We can describe a circuit for simulation purposes. So what, when we run that, it's as if we were running a circuit. Instead of just fabricating ourselves, uh, in hardware, we can simulate that, right, by using the Verilog language. Um, many of the Verilog constructs can be synthesized, so we can actually synthesize them. Um, but mostly designers, before the synthesis and fabrication, normally they simulate what will be the chip. And then um, they test it in many ways. And after approval, they just move forward because it's going to be costly for them, right? You can do many optimizations in simulation level before you just um, go for the, hard, the, the, the real hardware. All right, so the structure of a Verilog, so you have, you have different modules, uh, just like name is space in uh, C, C++. So you have modules there. The construct has initial uh, keyboard. And when we want to run Blocks in parallel, we use the keyword always. I'll have an example for you later. And we can um, specify continuous assignments, right, to a specific um, circuits. And so that's that. I'm just going to go fast on this because it's, uh, it will get boring for you guys just to listen. Uh, it's better for you just to, you know, play around with the code in prelab. Yeah. Are there any industry applications in Verilog? Yeah, many many of the industry applications have been built already in Verilog, and then you, they were synthesized and fabricated. Yeah. This is the way. I, either you define it in VHDL or Verilog. All right. Um, so, one of the elements of Verilog, one of the keyboards, is called wire. So it's, it's a mathematical abstraction of a real wire, so as if you have a wire in your hardware, right? It can have four possible values, so true or one, false or zero, x, which is unknown or not yet defined, depending on the, the scenario, or perhaps unconnected, right? The wire is not connected. And z is like high uh, impedance. So these are the different possible values that, is, that a wire can have when you, when you define where like this would be um, the values of that. All right. So 
registers. We can have memory elements, right, to save the values uh, while we are working with Verilog. So they can have also some uh, some possible values for for register. You, you, you're gonna get your hands dirty more on uh, with registers in your prelab as well. So I'm just gonna fast forward to the next element. So we have constants, right? Can be specified as as plain const constants like three, ten, twenty, whatever, right? Often we want to specify the bit width of a constant. So the way we represent um, a four bit representation of three would be four prime b, and then that would be the three. Right? It's a four bit representation of the tree. We can have a five bit representation of the tree, and that would be this plus. So in total we have five here. It's four. Right? So this is three, and this will say that it's a five bit representation of that tree. Okay. Similarly, it's going to be the four-bit representation of three here. Um, so for minuses, so just like that, for minus three, using tooth complement, we can have a representation of four bit. It's pretty intuitive. You can look at it like that. And then um, for representation of 15 in four bit, we can have it like as in F, okay, instead of those in binary. So different ways to define constants there. Um, we also have, just like any other language, we, ha we have unary operators, pluses, minuses, uh, ampersand. So for doing logical logics in Verilog, yeah. What does double greater than and double less than sign mean? So in, in, in different situations, uh, they might have different... Uh, so in in, uh, in this case, it might be like shift left and right. But sometimes it can have different other meanings than that, yeah. All right. Um, what else? So yeah, we, we call these operators uni unary as well. So ampersand... The uh, I forgot the, the name of this actually. Does anyone know the name of that? Yeah, we can Google it and find it out perhaps. Um, all right, so these are the, the different operands you can use in Verilog. So for that we have com uh, combinational circuits. So how we can define that? So when we have a network of gates, right, and a directed graph. So we want to pass a flow from several parts and then uh, through a direction through many gates. So the condition is there should be no cycle, right? And the output of the co uh, combinational circuit is uh, determined exclusively by the inputs. So all of the elements do some logic operations in the middle and then you're going to have an output, okay? So let's let's see an example. So that that half adder that we saw some slides ago. So just like I mentioned, um, we define it with with the module. So module half adder, a b c uh, a b a b sum and carry. <coughs> So the inputs would be A and B, so they're coming as two, two different signals. The output would be your sum and carry, okay? So what we do here, we define it with the assign <coughs> keyboard. So we want to assign sum as A, and, and that's the definition of the, uh, what is it? Who said that? Yeah. And then the, for the carry, the ampersand, ampersand works as the definition of Can anyone say? 
So let me just go back to half adder. Okay. So these are our inputs, and these two are the outputs, right? So we want to assign logics with these two. Okay? Let's go back there again. Oh yeah, absolutely. For, but for the first one. So this AND was the AND gate, right? Actually, let me see. Okay, let me see. All right. So, so we can use the assign keyword to assign values, right, to our parameters. In this case, we had sum and we had carry. And these can represent a permanent co connection. So as if you have connected these two signals together physically. Okay, in, um, in, in sort of a circuit. The assigned keyword can also specify only combinational circuits, okay? So let's see what does always construct me here. So using always, we can specify sequential circuits. Let's see an example here. Um, here. So for half adder, H underscore adder, so we have A, B, S, and C out. So our inputs are A and B. The output would be S and C out. So we use always amp, uh, at sign, right, A and B to define a sequential circuit here. So we begin and end, so that would be inside that. And we assign S as, again, just like the previous example when we had this. We have it as well here. And then the C out would be the end of A and B. Okay? The begin and end. And then that would be the end module. Okay? You'll, you'll get to know more examples on in pre lab. Okay, yeah. So, sir, this code is to simulate the gates that we had in the half adder example? So, that always add A and B, what does that mean? It just um, gives as, as long as A and B exist, right? It's, it's a condition to enter that segment which you define with begin and end. It, it could be like 100 lines, right? So this is a keyword in, in Verilog. It gives you some uh, functionality. So you can use always construct to specify sequential secrets. So it's going to run that without the need to have a memory. Okay. All right. Questions? Yeah. What is it? Last. Like last, last equal. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, it's sort of an assign. So it's, it's, it would be equal to that. Like a, so the way we define it is, is sort of an assign. Right? It's not equal to 
to assign to be used less than equal to output? No, we did not. We did not use a sign here, but this means a sign. Yeah. So, is the less than equal to operator used? For yeah. Assign? Yeah. Yeah. So that we use for the equal to operator by itself. If it is just s equal to, that doesn't mean s. So you could have gone the other way around like this. Yeah. Okay. okay so instead of using the assign yeah. keyword, you're using. All right, and this is just a high-level introduction. Perhaps there are other ways you can play around with Verilog, right? I'm just showing you the different functionalities, different keywords, and some few examples. Can anyone parse this code for us? You all parsing at the same time? So first of all, what does that mean? <coughs> so does anyone know what does this form mean? I mentioned it like a few slides ago. Those are two-bit uh, two representation of those numbers. Yes. So it's a two-bit representation of 0, 1, 2, and 3, OK? So can anyone parse from the beginning for us? Can you explain why? So are you talking about the S or the C part? Both. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the same half adder, right? right? It's a different way to represent it. So what is the uh, half adder thing? Uh, do? do? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, that was my second slide of the course today. Yeah, okay. So let's go back. You just do the following. <laughs> you have two signals, <laughs> right? We have one sum. One carry, okay? Um, so it's as if you're adding A and B, and on the, other, on the only case that you have carry equal to one is the case that both A and B are one, right? If you look at the truth tables. And so this is a carry. Both signals are coming this way and also that way. So the only case that this is one is the end of both of them, okay? And then the rest, is the signal itself, and that's how you calculate it using this gate. Yeah. How do you interpret the carry bit in like decimal? In decimal? Yeah, like how would you? Is this supposed to be interpreted in like you're listing it as a decimal? Or? No, you can just directly working it, working on it as a binary. Yeah. It's it's a it's a binary circuit, right? Right. Questions. Okay, so
Where were we? So, um, so far we didn't have any memory element. So if you wanted to store something, we were not. We were just passing as a flow some signals, some operations, and then some outputs, right? One way to design a simple memory is to use a pair of cross-coupled NOR gates, okay? They can, ask, uh, they can store an internal value okay, here. In, in your pre-lab also, you're going to play around with that. Um, you'll see some examples. So, we can think of memory elements as combinational circuits with feedback, okay? Just think about it as, as a black box. And uh, so as you know, the, the memory is normally implemented in using different technology, just like your DRAM of your laptop. But here, we can define it as, uh, on, on a very, on the simplest case, is a two-coupled um, NOR gate here, as you can see here. All right, so. Um uh, can pass these. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. What's the point of having it since that we can use hack as a to activate it? And then if, if we want three bits to activate it, we can just store the first for example the first two bit and then we can say how if we don't have a memory, how are we gonna store that? <coughs> yeah, if we have memory then we don't need yeah. for Yeah. I mean uh, so, yeah, but perhaps in most of the cases that I can think of, storing a value in memory and then reusing it again, it will slow down a lot your code. Okay, so why not, if you want to use that carry bit as an input of the next one, why not use a full adder, right? So have three of them at the same time, A, B, and C. Because at the end of the day, a full adder is using two half adder together. You see here? I mean, um, I mentioned that normally in, in uh, most of the recent circuits, they, they couple this eight times to have, to have an eight byte long adder, and then they can use a carry on the other one, just like you're adding eight bit by eight bit, right? This is just adding one, the output of this would be one carry again, right? It's as if, um, so if, if you are working with 16 bit system or 32 bit system, you need to couple them 32 times. Remember, you remember that multiplication that we were talking about, like an in your midterm. So, like we had this and this, right? So this can be done with one adder, one full adder. If you have a carry already, so you need a full adder. So if you want to do it concurrently, you need this uh, this many full adders, right? Because they they accept a carry themselves. They have to add two signals, A and B, A and B, A and B and B. So in this case, you need four full adders, right? Everyone got the idea? So this is just one, one of those on the simplest case. Sorry, why is not four this Because sometimes yeah, you need to, there was a carry coming somewhere else as an input. And you, you would have needed to start with that carry. Yeah, in this case, we don't need that. But in, in a general case, we might we might have one, right? If we didn't have any carry, yeah, we wanted to start adding these two only, yeah, that would be possible with just a full add, uh, half add. Good question, yeah. All right. So, Um. So, if our circuit 
had memory, right? So we can refer it uh, as, as a system that has a state because in each state the values can change. So when, when, uh, when you have memory you can store the value at each state that can be changed, right? So if we are, you have to deal with the state through that circuit. Um, so if, if it has a state, then a state can change, of course. So it goes through a sequence of states, right? Hence the name sequential uh, was, was coming from, okay? Uh, if you recall, in chapter 2 or 4, we were talking about clock and edge-triggered systems. So this is just like that. Uh, it's it's going to be a wrap, wrap up again. So you remember um, when, when we are dealing with a processor, we, meet, we need to make sure that our updates or our read happen always at the same clock cycle, at, at that specific uh, clock cycle. If it's edge triggered or not so it depend on it, uh, it depends on our convention right so let's see here so that's your clock cycle on top you have one on here on on, on the first level you have zero right and this one up and down shows your clock period so that's one, zero, and we need to make sure that we update them always at the same spot, right? Otherwise, we're gonna run into read and write issue. We uh, we talked about it in some lectures ago. So, and and the convention we talked about in race five was edge triggered, right? An edge triggered methodology allows a state element to be read and written in the same clock cycle without creating a race. So both processes do not access uh, an invalid, let's say, value. That's why we call it um, a race to access that um, value. Okay. All right. Also, there is the, the notion of latch uh, in Verilog, we call a variable. Um, a variable will keep its previous value if it's not assigned a value in an always block. Okay. So just like I mentioned, a couple and uh, nor, we can we can sort of store the value of this. So a typical lash or a d lash here. Uh, so a latch must be created to store the, this present value, okay, using these two coupled NOR. A latch does not capture um, at the edge of a clock. Instead, the output follows as long as the, uh, the enable pin is asserted, okay. These are just definitions. You're going to play with all of those in, in, in your um, prelab. All right, so what else we have? So this is okay. So on the other side, we have latch and also we have uh, flip-flop, right? FF stands for flip-flop, a D flip-flop with a falling edge triggered. So this is another module that you can use in, in Verilog. It doesn't have a memory. So operation of a D flip-flop with a falling edge trigger assuming the output is initially the asserted. So we have two different um, module. One is latch and the other one is flip-flop. In order to play around with an edge triggered D flip-flop, you can define uh, a, a simple module as D flip flop, which has clock D, Q, and Q, B. So these signals. 
So you're going to input your clock and D, the output would be reg of Q. So these are the inputs and this is the output. And you assign QB to the neg uh, negated Q and this block is the always. So you assign Q, uh, uh, D to Q here. It's better to play with the code to understand better because just these are just definitions for now. What is it? It's it's just a just a name, yeah. <coughs> okay. Timing is complex, of course. And Let's see if you have other things to cover. Yeah, just like what you know already in RIS 5, we have 32 bits, uh, 32 registers. Thus, we can have this amount of wire. Um, So that's an example of using um, a RISC-V ALU to do some stuff. So those logics could be add or plus minuses, equality check, and so on and so forth. Um, we've already discussed this in chapter four, that in order to write, you need the right um, port. So this should be enabled in order to write on that. For read, you don't need this. Um, so I'm just going to pass over it quickly. Yeah, also register file, read and write. We've already covered it in chapter four, like two, chap two lectures before the midterm. You can always refer to the, to the slides and the, the video. Mm, what else we got here? So that was the half other covered yeah these are not all right so I guess we're done with the appendix a uh, what you need to do is to start working on prelapse does anyone has anyone haven't started like do we have guys that haven't started working on this did you use uh, yesterday and the, the, on Monday to start working on prelapse okay have all of you installed Icarus compiler? Okay. All right, so um, carry on working on the play app. And so see you guys next week on Monday and Tuesday. This weekend, I'm going to post next play app, so we have another week to work on that. Okay, have a good night.